afternoon and welcome to the Gateway Live Update. Welcome here on the ninth day of February already, if you can believe it, 2021. Time keeps on slipping into the future, as one uh, prophet wrote. Um, we are in First John uh, and Gateway Live Updates, a 15-minute quick Bible study, devotional, and prayer during coronavirus which we gather every weekday, Monday through Friday at 12 noon till 12, 15 p.m. And we hope you can join us each day. Uh, right now we're in 1 John chapter 2. Uh, we've been going slow through chapter 2 because it's so deep. And so if you want to turn there in your device or if you're using a Bible, whichever you want to uh, do that, get there in 1 John chapter 2. And I'll, I'll wait for you. In 1 John chapter 2, we've come to where John the Apostle, again, saying some really, you know, brutal things, especially to American evangelicals. American evangelicals get offended at this stuff because we get babied all the time. But he said at the end of verse 6 yesterday, we covered by this, we know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way that Jesus walked. And that's tough because I got to walk like Jesus. And I do. If I'm really abiding in Christ, I'm going to do things like he did, do things that Jesus' lifestyle did. Verse 7 says, Beloved, I'm not writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you've had from the beginning. So, again, and you, we should, this is a, you should know this, guys. This isn't a new commandment. The old commandment is the word that you have heard at the same time it is a new commandment that i'm writing you on it is because you know as i said yesterday loving the lord with all your heart mind soul and strength this is the first tablet of the law where the commandments there are i'm the lord your god you shall have no god before you you should not make for yourselves a graven image and you should not misuse the lord's name and keep holy shabbat that's your relationship with god the second tablet of the law which is a list of things not to steal, defrauding one another, bearing false witness. That is the second tablet of the law. Love your Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, the first tablet, and love your neighbors yourself. But John says at the same time, it's a new commandment that I'm writing you, which you have heard in him and in you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Again, that's... I know you already heard this, but it's a tough thing to realize. If you hate your brother, you still are in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light and in him, and there's no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness had blinded his eyes. And again, you need to hear this again. I need to hear this again because... When you don't love your brother, when you hate your brother, you are walking in darkness. That's what God says, not I. Darkness. Darkness. And that's a sad thing. Verse 12, I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. On account of his namesake. And he comes up with these three things here, he says, to separate little children, um, and then the fathers and the young men talking about the you know, new believers, fathers who are more mature, and young men who are growing. And he says, I'm writing this to you, little children, because you your sins are forgiven on the count of his namesake. First thing you know as a new believer, hey, your forg sins are forgiven. I remember that feeling. I'm writing to you, fathers, verse 13, because you know him who is from the beginning. That's the Lord Jesus. You know him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked or the evil one, Satan, Porneus in Greek. And then he's, and so that's again with the young, young Christian who's growing in the Lord. They realize they're they're fighting against the devil and they're winning. That's what they realize, because you overcome the evil one. I write to you, children, because he goes back to children, because you know the Father. I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. And I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have 
overcome the evil one. So again, twice, the young man, that's what you want to be. You want to be growing in the Lord and overcoming the evil one. Now, the next passage is one that you know pretty well because you've been walking with the Lord any time because a lot of mess sermons, I'm sure, have been preached on it. Do not love the world. Now, it comes right from the lips of Jesus. John was with Jesus. Do not love the world or the things in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, again, just verse 15 is convicting enough. If I love the world, I don't love Jesus. And the love of the Father is not in me. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, or traditionally translated the lusts of the flesh, lusts and desires, same thing. Thuma in Greek means desires or lust. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. So these deadly things the the of the world because i'm not to love the world or the things in the world it says for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh what my body desires what i see something i want it just like eve in the garden she saw the fruit lust of the flesh a very tough thing because it's real and the lust of the eyes. So she decided to take it because it was good for food. And she she took it. The lust of the eyes that you see. And the pride of life. The pride of life. That's so deadly of a sin. And it's from the world, it says. The pride of life. So those three. Again, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. It's not from God. And the world is passing away. And the lust thereof, and the desires he's saying is going with it, because the world's passing away. But whoever does the will of the God is abiding forever. So listen, these lusts are temporary. They pass away with the world. Your desires, the things that you're struggling are so much right now, are so simple because they're going to go away. They're going away. But the one who does the will of God abides forever. It might be a hard victory. It might be an easy victory. But when you abide in Christ, you live forever, forever. Lust, the thing that you were lusting about last year at this time, whether it was a new car or drinking booze or getting high or a man or a woman, whatever it was, that thing went. But eternal life is still here. And that's what he's saying. Don't let those things get you because they're temporary. That's the whole point. The sin that you want is temporary. It doesn't really last long. But God's eternal life lasts forever. And that's a comforting thing to know. One more section. Verse 18 says, Children, it is the last hour, and you've heard that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, know it is the last hour. He's saying it's the last hour. John, back in the first century, was saying this. And Antichrist is coming. Yes, he is. He really is. And many antichrists have come. They have. Look. Just look at world history. You can see that yourself. We had many who tried to be a worldwide leader. Adolf Hitler. Mussolini. All these people that wanted to be the Caesar. Many Caesars of Russia. Genghis Khan. You can go on in history and keep going back. And you'll see people that wanted to be a worldwide ruler. Many of them, antichrists. Antichrist is a compound Greek word that means anti and Christos. Antis against or in place of Christos, Christ, the anointed one. In place of the anointed one. That's in place of Jesus, 
Messiah, the Christ. That's the word that's there. It doesn't mean that they're always just against. It's in place of anybody who worship in place of Christ is an antichrist. Don't let anyone lie to you. That's what antichrist is. Antichrist is anyone who is in place of Jesus Christ. And we shouldn't be looking for antichrist. We should be looking for Jesus Christ. Everybody wants to know, oh, is antichrist on earth here? Yeah, he's probably alive now, but we shouldn't be looking for antichrist. We should be looking for Jesus Christ. Amen? That's who we should be looking for. We shouldn't be wondering who's going to take, who's going to be the Antichrist. Because really, I, you know, as I believe, and I hope you do, that, and we just saw from 2 Thessalonians before we did 1 John, Antichrist isn't coming until the church goes and the Holy Spirit, the restrainer, is taken away. That's when Antichrist is going to be revealed. He won't be revealed till after the church is taken. Right away, because when the church is taken, Russia will evade Israel. Antichrist will be revealed. That'll happen. So if you're not a believer and you're here, you'll see what I'm saying is truth. But hopefully, you're all going with us. Everyone who sees this, we're all going up. Amen? That's what we long for. But Antichrist is coming, and many Antichrists have come. Many have come. Therefore, he, John says, know that it is the last hour, the eschatos ora, the last hour hour they went out from us but they were not of us for that if they had been of us they would have continued with us but they went out that it might be plain that they are not of us and he's just saying the people they were in the church and they went out and they wouldn't have went out he's saying if they were of us that's so true but they did and that's a fact but if they didn't go out, they would still be with us. That's what John's trying to tell you. Verse 20. But you, listen. But you have an anointing by the Holy One of God. And you have, uh, ESV says, all knowledge. King James says, you know all things. That's a bad translation. But I like to say that because I always say I know all things. But Because you know all things. But it means, listen, he's saying, you have an unction, an anointing from the Holy One of God. And you all know. That's what he's saying. You know. Because the anointing is inside you. And he tells you, there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that guy. That's the anointing of God. That's not just your great intellect. It's God's anointing in you. And you all know. And we're going to pick up there tomorrow because we're running out of time. This always happens. And we're going to pray. Please stay tuned as we pray against coronavirus join us and believe together with us as we come against this stupid virus that's still uh, bothering us is still tormenting us so stay with us and let's pray and father in the name of jesus lord we ask that you would destroy coronavirus covid 19 lord that you would rid our earth from it lord that you would help us lord that we completely completely, totally, 100% defeated by your power, not by a, a vaccine, not by somebody coming up with a heal and cure, but by your power, Lord, we call upon this coronavirus in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We ask you to bless us, Lord. We pray for those who are sick, Lord. Touch those who need it, Lord. Um, and all on our prayer list, Lord, for um, Carmel's daughter, Andrea, Lord, that you would uh, bless her as she goes, Lord, on this interview, Father. We ask you to bless, Father, those who are sick, those who need healing. Bless, touch, stretch forth that now scarred hand of Calvary and heal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And again, thanks for joining us. Um, we'll be back tomorrow at noon as we continue in First John. We'll be picking right up there in verse 22 where we left off. So join us. And uh, tomorrow night also we have verse by verse Bible study at 7.30 p.m., which will be webcast. It's supposed to be snowing. 
Uh, we're probably not going to cancel, but most people won't come. So just watch here on our uh, webcast. Us bold people who aren't afraid of snow will be here. And we'll be webcasting the service to you as we cover the 12th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. So we hope you could join us. And we hope to see you back tomorrow. And until we greet you on the morrow, may God's richest and blessed be yours. We'll see you. God bless.